He was sexting women under the name Carlos Danger. See, this is Wiener's way of getting more Latino support. I'll use, I'll be Carlos Danger. Yeah. yeah. At a press conference, Wiener apologized, said this will never happen again, or my name isn't Carlos Danger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even after the sexting scandal that ended his congressional career, it turns out he learned nothing. Has this man never heard of Snapchat? <laughs> <laughs> no summer slump for the late night comics, thanks to Anthony Winter. Let's get to that with our roundtable. Joined by Judy Smith, Crisis Management Pro helped create the hit show Scandal. And Judy, you've had no shortage of high profile clients in tough spots. Monica Lewinsky, Michael Vick, Paula oh Dean. You know, I was so surprised to hear you say this morning that you wouldn't even take Anthony Weiner as a client. Well, no, I mean, look, it's, <laughs> first of all, it's apparent that he's not listening to anyone because his uh, campaign manager just, just quit. Um, I think he has so many problems, but I think the, the main issue is that he comes out, he says, please forgive me to the American public, and then we're all shocked to find out that this has continued. And it's not like sort of the usual politician having an affair. There's an element of creepiness to, to this, and I think that the American people uh, feel that. And I think people are saying, look, step down. It's not about you. It's about the people that you say that you want to represent. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, he's trying so hard to put the genie back in the bottle. It's not going to happen for him. He can't do it. It's not going to happen, but him. Peggy, see, it sure yeah. seems like he's not going to quit even though his poll number's yeah. plummeting in New York. Yeah. It, it, what's mysterious to me is not will he get out. It's why did he get in? He yes. knew what the history was. He knew what he would be visiting on New York. Uh, it all seems to me quite mad, and I think we're, I mean I think his behavior has been quite clinically sick. And I think we will now find out in the Democratic primary if indeed the voters are sick. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the real question. I don't think we're going to get to that point. I you think, think he's going to get think? I think he has to. I just yeah. think, I think the consequences, I think what you may have been about to say, the consequences of him for, his, for whatever future he has, whether it's in the private sector or whatever, of getting 5 or 10% or some very small number in this primary, I just think are, are overwhelming. But you know, I think, uh, we, you said, I think, that New Yorkers, leave it to New Yorkers. I, you see the polls imploding already. But I have to say, as a lifelong New Yorker, I find this such a turnoff, such a distraction mm. from the real scandals of this city. And to get serious for a moment, I mean, the metastasizing inequality in the city is a real scandal. When was the last time you really fixed on that? There is one candidate in this race, Bill de Blasio, who is speaking to that in a coherent way. But otherwise, until Anthony Weiner's sexting and all of that leave the race, the oxygen sucked he out. He seems to yeah. be talking about that uh, as well, George, and maybe making an opposite calculation from what Steve says, that if he stays in the race, even if he doesn't do all that well, it's sort of flushed through the system. I will not dwell on the fact, although it is a fact, that if these two people, the Filmer in San Diego and Weiner here, were Republicans... They're facing charges of sexual harassment. Republicans, this would be part of a lot of somber sociology in the media about the Republican war on women. I will skip that. <laughs> I will go instead to the fact. What explains this man, Peggy, is an animal neediness for public ratification. There are people like this. He got out of college, went to work on the congressional staff, became the youngest member ever of the New York City Council, ran for the House. He can't live without this. And what strikes me is, you talk as a New Yorker, New York City was the incubator of the heroic period of American liberalism. Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt, Roosevelt, Francis Perkins, his great secretary of the labor, first female member of the Congress, Fiorello LaGuardia, Republican, and this is what New York liberalism Judy, now costs. I think one of the other things that surprised a lot of people, though maybe it's not surprising that Anthony Weiner wants to stay in, but his wife, Huma Abedin, close aide yeah. to Hillary Clinton, gives her first press conference on Tuesday after the new yes. uh, revelations. You know, in the past with other candidates, when the wife stands by them, it seems to make a difference with the voters seems less likely this time. Well, absolutely. I mean, first of all, let me say that I think it's really a personal choice for to decide that. But it made no difference whatsoever because his behavior is just reprehensible. Um, clearly, he has sort of an interest in keeping the late night talk show host folks going with it. But yeah, he needs to, he needs to step down. He's sort of engaging in the same behavior uh, as the as as the mayor, which is that it's I'm the mayor. as uh, I'm sorry in San Diego. His name Bob Filner, yes, mayor. Yes, so I should absolutely. say, yeah. facing yes. charges of sexual harassment, seven women have come forward. Right. He's going to not resign. Yes. Take two weeks off to get treatment. 
two weeks to <laughs> All right, but to fix go, the problem. I am, I am going to pick, yes. pick up on what George said about yeah. the war on women. Um, first of all, many Democratic women have come forward to say this is reprehensible, this is odious, what we're seeing in San Diego right. with the mayor, with Anthony Weiner. But I think it's very simplistic to draw on the misdeeds of a few, and let's not forget sexual harassment is not confined to one party, Vitter, Sanford, Gingrich. It's about the systemic policies that affect all women and discrimination and harassment and how you protect women from that as well as giving them public policy tools to live their lives in full. And I think across the board, the Republican Party has vitiated, has gutted the rights on reproductive rights, protection from sexual harassment and discrimination, protection from domestic abuse, pay, equal pay. I'm, these are issues that are, affect all women. Now that's yeah. what I call a pivot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you. Yeah. Done well. Yeah. Done well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just uh, w w one more pivot as well, mm. just to pick up on that point, though, does this blow back on Democrats with having both Filner? You've got Elliot Spitzer in the race for controller here, Wiener all at the same time. No, I don't think so, because I think it is something that affects both parties, whether it's Mark Sanford or David Vitter or whomever. I think it's, it's confined to some individuals who clearly have issues. I don't think it is a broader point about politics or about anything. I think it's a bunch of people who are narcissistic, self-indulgent, sick, whatever Judy yes. would classify them as. All of the above. And look, I think Spitzer has done a good job in addressing the elephant in the room, in particular in his ads, and saying, yes, I've made a mistake, but I'm here to serve. He's also, I think, really taking a, a lower position, controller, trying to get that, um, by saying, let me re-engage you and build back up the trust from the public. And that's important. Instead of Wiener sort of jumping in, you know, one of the most Crisis management lesson number one. Thing. Yes. I mean, you can't lie in your apology. No, right. 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 poor form. Yes. It's very poor form. Absolutely. Well, we'll be watching to see if Steve is right and see if he does get out of the race. Thank you. I've got to take a quick break.